um, Antonio Thomas was detained and arrested and booked into the Sacramento County Jail. And approximately on the 9th, he was brought to the hospital, UC Davis, and he was in a coma, and he has no brain activity. Um, according to the doctor, he was without breath for at least three minutes, so he thinks that he was probably put into a choke. Um, CHP is who arrested, I'm sorry, Citrus Heights Police Department is who arrested him. He was in the county jail with the Sacramento Sheriff Department, and for some reason they sent Sacramento um, Police Department to notify the family, which was 24 hours later on the 10th. And they sent them to Citrus Heights, which is not their jurisdiction, so we're a little bit confused about that. Um, mostly we have a lot of questions because we don't know what happened. There was no fight, he has no bruises, he's got one cut on his head, the theory is, is that he was put in a chokehold and then maybe when he was released, he was dropped and hit his head. Um, but there's no bruises on his knuckles, on his arms. And so we're really looking for answers from the Sacramento Sheriff Department. Um, so far, SAC PD has notified the family and said that they don't have answers, but they'll look for them, but they haven't provided any yet. Um, we know that there's video in the jail and nobody has released that video or gone over it and notified the family of what's on that video. And so we do have a list of demands today for the Sacramento Police Department and the Sacramento uh, County Jail, which is the Sacramento Sheriff's Department, and the Board of Supervisors, who, who is a branch of the county government. Um, so I will go over those demands right now. The first demand is that we need all video that shows the incident that put Antonio Thomas in a coma. We need the names of all officers and or inmates involved in the discovery of Antonio being found unresponsive. And who gave direct directives to SAC PD to notify this family who was outside of the city police jurisdiction. If this act was carried out by deputies, we need these deputies removed from the Sacramento County Jail and terminated from the Sacramento County Sheriff Department. These deputies are not safe for our community. Lastly, the Sacramento County Jail has a documented history of neglect, abuse, death, torture, and unlivable conditions. We need the Board of Supervisors to create a community-led commission that oversees reports of misconduct and abuse with the power to enact repercussions on deputies involved in said abuse and misconduct. I don't know if you remember not that long ago, Marshall Miles was killed in the jail and the coroner, um, they did an autopsy and found that it was um, excessive force that was the cause of his death. And so that's just one example in less than a year ago where, where we saw this pretty much happen. Um, so we need more answers and this family deserves to have any answers. And I'll take about two questions. What makes you think the deputies are Well, anytime that something happens in the jail and it's between two inmates, automatically the, the jail will report to the news that this inmate did this to another inmate or they'll say that two inmates got into a fight and this and this what happened. But they're not giving any answers. And then also the fact that there's no bruising and there's no fight. And the man that we're talking about, he would defend himself if he was up against somebody else. And he didn't fight anybody. So we think that it's most likely somebody, um, staff or a deputy. But we're not sure we want those answers. That's what we're trying to find out. Whether it's an inmate or an officer, we need to know. You should be here defending yourself. There ain't none of them here right now. Any other questions? They just said that he, they found him unresponsive and that he's at UC Davis and to go visit him. Notify me. He he Notify me on the phone saying that he was home, nobody's hurt. He just needs to talk to me. And I asked him on the phone just regarding my son. And he said he couldn't talk to me. When he told me nobody's hurt, nobody's in trouble, I just needed to talk to him. So when we arrived at my house,
justice was not answered and they said that it was a blackout. But when he notified me at my house, he told me, officer gave me his card and said I released some my son is a very outgoing person. He can defend himself. And he's well known by the Sacramento County Office that always go to the Sacramento County Office. But not the same officer. So, what is that I don't know. That was prior. That yeah. was prior. So five day probation hold was prior. He yeah, was released and let out. Yeah, that was the twenty eighth of um, November the day after Thanksgiving. And I don't know why he was picked up. Can you just explain as a mother what this ordeal was like? It's, it's terrible. I cannot imagine life without my son. It's terrible, especially when the officer called me and tell me. Nobody's hurt. He just want to come talk to me. Nobody's hurt. Nobody's in trouble. But then when he gets to my house, he went to an address I haven't lived at in five years. And then he makes it to my house after I give him my address after he calls me. And then he tells me he come with him and two other officers and say that he was found on the house of the cell. And they don't know if he had an altercation with another man. Why do you think they said that he wasn't hurt at first and then they told you that he was in a coma? That's what? something we wouldn't be able to answer because we don't know why the police do what they do. I don't know why. I don't know why. That's, the, that's why we're here. We need, we need answers. So. Yeah. 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 Um, 